go. We have a guest now. <laughs> All right, Ryan. Hello. There she is. There hey. she is. How Hi. are you doing, Miss Aurora Snow? Good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I really am. I'm uh, so thankful that you uh, come by, came by and talked to us. We are big fans. Obviously, you were on the show earlier this season. We had a great conversation. And, and now I, I'm, I'm glad to finally talk to you face to face. Yes. Yeah, I think last time was on a phone call, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. Yep. It was. So how is Miss Aurora Snow? Please. Um, how are you doing? <laughs> doing well. Um, I was ridiculously excited. I started seeing pumpkin spice latte signs everywhere. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's terrible. But I'm one of those. Yes. <laughs> that is definitely I, I a too. game changer. That the pumpkin spice latte is definitely a game changer with the women in this country. No two ways about that. I go down my Facebook feed and this is all I see. The pumpkin spice lattes, uh, decorations coming out, um, the, the movie, the uh, what's the one with the three witches? Hocus Pocus. Um, yes. Right? Yes. Yep. Hocus yeah. Pocus. Hocus Pocus. They got another one of those coming out. So everybody's excited. I like to see it, you know, kind of puts people in a good mood this time of year. Well, it does because this is, we're getting into cuddle season where you yes. get to wrap up in blankets and sweaters and get snuggly with somebody. It's perfect weather for that. It's hood, well, for hoodie weather. Morris, no, I'd imagine that would be perfect. But for me, Mike tries to cuddle me. That is not cool. We're, uh, <laughs> I just put it out there. <laughs> I'm a Chris, big no, cuddly guy. I'm sorry, Ryan. Sorry, I'm sorry. The last time we spoke, you were having some issues driving in the snow, which I find is ironic. <laughs> because your name so i thought about you i did i thought about you the rest of the winter i thought i hope she's doing well over there in the midwest how did it not go did you, did you pick up did you pick up on it no no i don't think that i've driven in the snow since the last time that we spoke i felt like i barely survived those couple of times when i tested it out but yes. uh, no I, I think that in the winter out in the midwest i rely heavily on the kindness of neighbors or friends if they would like to see me leave the house <laughs> right right that's the, that's the best way to do it because driving in the snow it, it's the worst i hate it i do it all the time but i hate it but see, you're capable. And there's a big difference. I know I'm not. Capable. I, I, I don't know if I'm capable. I just haven't wrecked yet. We're just going to because I forget that it's snowing sometimes and I'll just be driving the way I normally do. I'm like, oh, this is not good. So you drive. So wait, you forget that it's snowing. I forget that I have to change the way I drive with the snow. I'm just cruising okay. along and I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Way too fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Do you go back out west at all? Do you go back visit, um, you know, your, your home area, Los Angeles yes. area where you're from? Do you, you get back out there? Yeah, I was actually just out there ooh, maybe three weeks ago. So okay. I was out there for quite a while. Yeah, I go out about, I don't know, at least four times a year, five times a okay. year. Yeah. That's awesome. You get back to town, meet up with friends, hang out with family, do all that kind of fun stuff. That's always the toss up, right? Because I'm, I'm coming into town to see friends or family. And then it's like, do I post on social media? Who's going to get mad at me for not seeing? So yeah. I usually wait. I post no photos, tell no one except the people I'm reaching out to directly. And yes. uh, then a few weeks later, when I'm back home, I post the photos. They're like, oh, how did I miss you? <laughs> yeah, hey, you got it down, Pat. Now, I also hey. seen Aurora getting into the important stuff right off the top here. I seen recently that you got a new cat. Yes. Well, now, is, that, is that a reason, Siamese cat? She's I'm a sorry? rag doll. She's a rag doll. <laughs> and so I didn't know that they made dogs and cat bodies. She is <laughs> very large. She's a, she's still kind of a baby. She's still kittenish. Uh, okay. she's about 17 pounds and which is apparently, yeah, right. That's, That's huge. a big cat. Um, this cat is bigger than some small dogs. So, but she also kind of functions and has behaviors like a dog. When I come home, she runs downstairs to greet me like a dog. People come over. She runs to the door. She's like, Oh, who's coming, coming over. Who, you know, who is this very sociable? She plays fetch when she wants to play with her toys. <laughs> she will pick them up. And you will hear them because they've got bells and all sorts of noisy things on them. So you hear this like toy throughout the house. And then she comes and drops it at your feet. And she's like, I want to play. Aww. 
So that's all I saw. Do you, do you have any other pets, or is this the only one? No, she's my only one. She's our COVID kitty. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> we needed a pet. That's awesome. What, You're so isolated. What's her name, Aurora? <laughs> uh, Pikachu. I like that. I love it. I love it. We call him Mike Jigglypuff. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. Does that come with any superpowers? Unfortunately, no. Oh. No, uh, I, I was robbed of that ability. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, apparently just being the punching bag of the show, that's my superpower. You know, that could be a pretty good superpower. It is, you know. Mike's superpowers. Yeah, oh, right. Mike's superpowers are unspoke. Uh, we'll, we'll just keep that. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I have a question. I, I read your article in the Daily Beast. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell us about that? The uh, Which uh, one? Uh, the, the most recent one, I'm sorry, on the uh, okay. one that came out September 11th. Or yeah, the one, yeah. so Jane Wild, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, I thought her story, she had a really interesting story, you know. Um, one of the things that she had really felt, so she f- feels that she's been a sex trafficking survivor. Mm-hmm. And she turned to porn to kind of heal that trauma and get over it, which I thought was pretty interesting, right? Yeah. So when she first got into the business, she had gotten in through this online ad that she had answered and developed a fairly unhealthy relationship from what I can tell uh, with this guy who mentored her, right? But Mm -hmm. really what we're thinking is suitcase pimp, right? Yeah. And uh, so she did that for about, I think about a year. And um, for her, that was a very different experience than traditional porn. And I thought that was an interesting distinction, especially since right now it, in media, we have this proliferation of these types of platforms with only fans webcamming and things like that. And here's somebody who entered through that and then went to traditional porn. And for her, there was a really big distinction. And it was also interesting that she felt that you know, she was sex trafficked and other people could be too through that medium because that's not really something that we've talked about or even really thought about, right? Yeah. We feel like when, when women are putting themselves on webcams or only fan platforms, that it's very direct. And, you know, thinking about maybe a guy behind that or really anybody behind that, a manager or somebody controlling essentially, mm-hmm. right? Somebody else who has that power. Um, I don't, I think that's invisible, right? We're not thinking about that maybe as much as we should be. Yeah, because that, that was my takeaway too when I read the article was we think of OnlyFans and webcam, it's just, you know, the actress that we see on the screen, she's the one controlling everything, never thinking that, okay, there could be someone else behind the scenes. And then like you said, like trafficking or recruiting them to go into these other industries. Because we think of sex trafficking of, okay, you're kidnapped, we're going to drug you, take you halfway across the country, and then make you do what we're going to make you do. We don't think of it as this way of being recruited to maybe someone passing themselves off as reputable to get into the industry. And I think that's kind of where the importance of that Mm -hmm. article and kind of some of the other things that I write, that's where that becomes really valuable. Because new people who aren't aware of how this works could maybe do a Google search and start putting in different terms. And you could actually see legitimate news articles Mm -hmm. pop up and say, oh, that's what I should be looking for. Now, Aurora, is there, um, I I, I don't know, is there, is there a manager scene in porn? Is there, there agents? Is there anybody that like, that's there to kind of be a buffer for, for the actors and actresses? I mean, there is basically out there running the, doing the thing on your own. It's a little bit of both. Um, So there are managers, there are agents, but now are they all good managers or agents, right? right? So some of those same people are some of the problems, right? And so when you get into traditional porn and the companies and the talent and the directors, it's actually kind of a small net group. And usually when you see somebody who's, let's just call them a bad actor, right? Somebody who's taking advantage of performers in the industry, you will have- other directors and other agents try to squeeze them out because it is on the one hand, a professional business. You don't want that. Um, The adult entertainment industry already has a bad rap. I mean, there's a stigma to fight against and the people that work in it make their life, you know, make their livelihood out of this. Um, That's not something they want to see in that business either. Um, However, it's the internet. And the internet just really takes all of that localized thinking 
and widens it out and it makes it really difficult to catch things like this, right? Anybody right. Can say, hey, I was in the adult industry. I have all of the knowledge. I can make you rich and you don't even have to leave your home. In fact, you don't even have to leave your bedroom and you can make so much money and never have sex with anyone. Right. I mean, that's pretty appealing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it, you know, you guys were talking about, you know, the, the most recent article you've written. You know, that's something that we've noticed here in, in Western Pennsylvania and over in Eastern Ohio. This, this human, human trafficking thing is becoming a pretty big issue. What's, what's going on? I mean, I can't speak for <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Why all of a sudden, yes. this, um, you know, it was something that, you know, I, I don't know about yourself out, out West, but when we were growing up, this was something that we didn't really have to deal with. Now, all of a sudden, you know, is, is it, um, I, I, I don't know. You're, you're just hearing it so much. I've been hearing about pockets of, uh, you, you know, th these areas, certain areas that they're finding, you know, it's insane, isn't it? It is. And so I think two things are happening. One, we have a greater awareness because of social media, the way that our news is set up. So news travels a lot faster. Mm -hmm. um, it's also salacious. That kind of stuff travels yes. faster. Um, I think the second thing that's going on is that we see a lot of things that are not in fact trafficking being labeled as trafficking because right. then it gives law enforcement an avenue that they can pursue and shut down maybe massage parlors or illegal brothels. The second you call that sex trafficking, you're able to get just free reign to go in there and shut that down. Um, if you don't call it sex trafficking, you know, are you really gonna have the same kind of leniency or authority, right? To go into this massage parlor where you you're suspect right. something is happening. Um, and I think we saw that uh, back in Florida, it was a while ago, was it Robert Duvall? Who was involved in that? Robert Kraft, the uh, Kraft. owner of the pa of the Sorry. Patriots. Yes, yes. yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> like, not every time you someone's name right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Robert Kraft, right? And I and I wrote about that, but it's been a little while as well. But there we saw the word, you know, trafficked. Right mm -hmm. now, it didn't seem likely that a lot of those people were trafficked. It looked like yeah. that was massage parlor. Um, right. But using the terms like trafficking allowed the police to go in and shut it down. So this is why I love talking to you. You know what? I, I learned something from you every time we've spoke, Aurora. I, I really have. <laughs> and I can't say that about all the guests. I, I, I truly honestly do. I, I learn something every time we talk. Um, let me ask you something real quick. Did you just go on a vacation this summer? <laughs> I, I did, yes. <laughs> I don't want to change the subject, but I do recall seeing a bunch of nice, older-looking buildings, maybe Europe-y. Yes, Where did you uh, go? So I went to England uh, oh, for nice. a weekend, uh, and then after that, we I went backpacking in Ireland. Wow! So, Have you yeah. ever been over there before, Aurora? No, that was a first. And I've never okay. actually, and just to be clear, I've never been backpacking. I've never been to yeah. Ireland. I've never been backpacking. And so I, you know, when you think about backpacking, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to be out in, I don't know, the wild, whatever, for a while. Right. And um, I, I thought about all the things I might need in that backpack. What I didn't think about was how heavy it was going to mm -hmm. be for the many hours <laughs> I was carrying it every day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I hiked, uh, it was like a 60 mile stretch of the Appalachian Trail one summer. And yeah, you think, oh, I need this, I need that, I need that. The An hour into hiking, you're like, no, I don't need half of what I brought. You're, you're, <laughs> you're questioning like, why, why did I think I need this? I don't need it or never need it again. Yeah, Ireland was amazing. The people were just so incredibly friendly. Were they? Uh, they were, yeah. Was it because they were they were drunk all the time? I mean, just a, a, <laughs> hey, no, leave us Irish uh, people alone. <laughs> oh, was that a stereotype, right? The Irish are always drinking. Was everybody drunk in this country is what I want to know. Yes, everybody went to the pub frequently. Yes. As yes, as Ryan. As yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, wow, oh. you were on vacation. Yeah, and it was it was actually a lot of fun. So I was there uh, with my boyfriend and his best friend, and it had been their kind of childhood boyhood dream to do this like big backpacking kind of walkabout nice. across Ireland. And um, 
So it was neat to see them realize their dream in real time. Yeah. So. Wow. What about over in England and any kind of, um, you guys go check out like some crazy Big Ben or any, you know, any of those kind of things? So we were actually staying at Leeds Castle. Ooh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, my again, boyfriend's cousin was having a wedding there. So oh. <laughs> yeah, it was wow, amazing. that's awesome. Um, like the knights in shining armor, everything, oh, just the whole <laughs> castle. Huh? Oh, there were the castle, the moats, uh, the horse yeah. drawn carriages. Yeah. But the best part, the absolute probably best part of that trip was after the after hours when the castle was actually shut down and roped off and there was a group of us we had a lot to drink we're having a great time and decided to go roam the castle yeah so you know we, we saw these velvet robes and we're like oh that's just to keep other people out yeah that's all <laughs> to pretend to americans yeah clearly right <laughs> so we wandered tried every door every door that we could open we did we went in um and I, you know all of that stuff that is all on camera you know you've got security guards that are watching it there's no way it's yeah. not monitored 24 oh, 7 no. so knowing this right we knew this we're just waiting for somebody to say hey you can't be in there they didn't care we wandered really? that place it was amazing and then we wow. walked out and waved at the security guards who were obviously sitting in front of monitors <laughs> right right that's awesome and, you know yeah. you know those kind of experiences aurora that's something that you you're, you're not going to get here just because of the time and the age of, of our country and yeah. england and that that's just something that would be so amazing to see yeah the history, just thinking about how people had to live back then, what it took to really mm -hmm. erect these castles yeah. and to travel. You know, we're so lucky to be able to get somewhere within six hours, 24 hours, that sort of thing. But, you know, how people had to travel and how long it took them, the communication must have just been so poor. Uh, yeah, <laughs> right. Just mailing a letter or sending it by pigeon, you know? You're right. You're right. <laughs> kind of like Game of Thrones. We see yeah. this in like Game of Thrones or House of Dragon. Yeah. Although for yeah. some reason, have you noticed that I don't, are you guys watching that at all? I have yet to, oh, I, I watched Game of Thrones. I've yet to um, start um, House of Dragons. I'm going to wait till it's done and then just binge watch it. Oh, smart. I'm that guy. Yeah, no, no, you can spoil I love spoilers. Oh, no, I'm not going to spoil it for anybody. What I'm going to say, though, is that the way they communicate, they're like, here, go send a letter to this king in this faraway land. Mm. And it's like the next day and someone shows up with their letter. No. Like, Unless you're writing dragons. How do you yeah. do that? Right. Yeah, because it took them, it took them, what, four seasons to travel halfway across the map in the first, se first season. Right. And this one, oh, no, we can get there in a day. Yeah, and not everyone's riding dragons, so. No, exactly. That's They need their little <laughs> ravens back again. You know, yes. take, a, take a week to get there. <laughs> Speaking now, of Game of Thrones, time... what, what, ahead, what, since I have you here, what was your thought on the last season? Much like many other fans. Yeah, I hated it. Pleased with it. Yes. yes, neither was, was I. Just... Mm -mm. No. no. So it would be really awesome if, Game of Thrones could get a budget and say, hey, uh, we're going to do a redo. Mm -hmm. Let's redo that last season, pull back in some stellar writing like we used to see in the early yeah. seasons. So it just it felt like the writing um, was not as solid as yeah. it had been in previous seasons. And characters so. like they were totally going opposite of what they did through the first yeah. seven seasons even halfway through season eight they just did a change for no reason like Tyrion betraying Varys I'm like where'd that come from never saw that coming yeah it, it just yeah it left a bad taste in my mouth that's why I'm kind of waiting on this one I was like I'm just gonna wait see if it's good or not I really like it so far so so far so good we're four episodes in so. I'm definitely gonna have to check it out now I recommend it. Aurora, last time we talked, we briefly talked about the iconic, the iconic Ron Jeremy. Now, I personally haven't seen anything on him recently. Has there been any any update on his whole situation, or is it basically just kind of going through its going through its course? You know, I haven't really seen anything new, um, but I also haven't been looking. You're right, so. right. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at as well. Uh. So now. 
the Daily Beast. So you are you're still right. Well, I'm sorry, you're still writing for the Daily Beast, of course. Like yes. I said, we were just talking about your latest article. Are you you have anything in the plans, Aurora, for um is as far as journalism, as far as writing? Do you have any plans to to branch off, do anything different? Um, what, what's going on? Where are you heading now with what your with your journalism, Aurora? I mean, I think we're gonna see a lot more writing from me in the future. It's something that I I'm always writing. Um I just sometimes need to spend more time on it. I, I, I <laughs> this gets complicated for me, right? Because I have one of my goals, life goals really has always been to write books. And I think I've lived enough life. I can now put that in into context and write a book on it. And it's something that I always circle back to, but I always end up talking about it more than actually, you right. know, putting my ass in the chair, just sitting in front of that computer and knocking it out. Right. Um, it's really easy for me to kind of attend to regular life events or go on trips. And, you know, I fall victim to all of those things just like everyone else. Um, but that's that's a goal of mine, let's say. So hopefully okay. we'll see me achieve that goal. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. I mean, uh, you know, every time, every time you do write something, it does. It comes down my Twitter feed. I see it. I always try to heart it. Um, you know, Thank always you. You, you have an interesting take, Aurora. You know, I, I definitely like reading your your content. It's always good. Thank you very much. It's great to hear. Always oh, absolutely. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now, is there any? Uh, let me see. What do I what do I got here? Is there anything anything crazy in your life since the last time we spoke, Aurora? I mean, we're here in the good, the vacations, <laughs> the cat. Nothing <laughs> crazy. Nobody. Nobody in the grocery bad? store did anything crazy or any. Any good stories? Um, oh, well, so, you know, I live in a fair, I, I am in the Midwest. It's a small, yeah. small place. Uh, yeah. Once one person recognizes me, it spreads like wildfire because it's yeah, really juicy bad. gossip. Um, and I've kind of, yeah. I've gotten very used to that. But um, as I add new people to my life, um, they have to get used to that too. And right. so, and I, I tend to forget about that. I forget that I'm not the only person who has to think about that or deal with it. Um, right. And so that's been kind of interesting to navigate yeah. <laughs> new situations. Uh, I went to a barbecue with a boyfriend. I feel like I've said that word a lot, sorry. Um, <laughs> So, um, but anyway, go to this barbecue and um, I guess somebody there recognized me and then it just became this whole chain of events. And he yeah. told me later and he's like, yeah, so somebody ratted you out. And now all of his friends know. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, he seems like so, a great guy. You mentioned him three, four, 95 times. I don't know how many. I know, right? I was hearing <laughs> that. I'm like, oh. But hey, yeah. if he's treating our friend Aurora fine, he's okay with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was not that kind of podcast. Um. <laughs> have you have you and the boyfriend been dating for some time? Has this been a, a, a long term? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Long term, I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah, it is now. Um. <laughs> okay, <good. laughs> uh, which has also been so. That's actually been just a trip for me because usually I'm just I, I cut it off. I'm like, we went through three dates. You're out. I'm not going to do right. this. I have really prioritized friends in my life and going out and doing things and just kind of prioritizing all of the things that I want to do or, you know, have a kid, kid stuff. And yeah. so I think that it's also been kind of this like fun new thing where it makes you feel like you're 20 again. So yeah. it's really fun. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't going to bring up your, 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 your uh, little one, but how are they doing with school? Everything going well back oh. in the swing of school? loves going to school. He's such a good kid. So yeah. I know probably all parents say that. Uh, no, I know my mind's, no, mind's a does. little, yeah. oh, oh, my, my, he's, he's a handful. He, he's four <laughs> years old and thinks he can do whatever he wants whenever he wants. Oh, it's that age. Yeah. So yeah. I felt like there were terrible threes, terrible fours. By the time he hit five, I was like, oh, this is the good age. <laughs> See, my, my friend kept telling me, get to four get to four no. it'll be fine no it, it went downhill like yes, two I know. was bad three was bad four is even worse how is it getting worse you know I'm not I, good till five. Oh, oh god <laughs> i i don't know <laughs> if i have it in me <laughs> it's, it's wild because up until five that's when they're the cutest the cuddliest you just want to so always be there 
but they're what? just so eh, don't, oh, no, he, don't touch he's me. sweet he's sweet now but when oh when he's not sweet i oh okay so i have a theory on this though it's because they're okay. making that weird awkward transition from mm. baby toddler to actually little kid yeah it's a baby toddler they're used to like they cry they get what they want mm -hmm. you know so you're you're always on command doing everything and then they get a little older and you're like oh now you can't have everything you want yeah. so they're throwing a bunch of tantrums and testing that out until they yes. figure out oh i have to follow these rules and then i feel like we see that transition again from teenage to like adulthood yeah same transition right what do you mean i have to have all this responsibility yeah. of these things no exactly. and then they just throw wow, these yeah at. Yeah. So I feel like it's those two transitions. So there's Absolutely. like that sweet spot, it sounds like. Yeah, from... between like five and I'm not sure because I'm not there yet. But five I and know five and eleven. You get no, a six year window, know. maybe five to twelve. I'm hoping it's like five to fifteen. Like that, oh, I'll take a nice decade of peace and quiet. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. And then you get through like another five years or I don't know. Maybe it's longer, but we'll there see. might be a lot like, you know, guys, you know, we take so much longer to mature, so it's gonna be Oh God! And you can tell it's going to be a long and I one. I both have children because Mike his his hair is gone. I've ripped and it mine all has out. Turned a different color. In fact, we are twenty two years old, and this is what our kids have done to us. So that gives you a little idea. Yeah. Nobody warns you. Everyone says how great it's going to be and how life changing. And you know what? There, right? It is life changing. Oh, oh life changing yeah. for you know. Yeah. I miss I miss sleep. Yes. <laughs> Like I, I, hey, I like it when they were like smaller. Before. Babies were smaller. It was so much easier than now when they can walk and talk and their own little personalities. Yeah, I really liked it when you could like leash them, papoose them, and put them in one of those like big play pens. Yeah, you know, they were safe. That was yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then they hey, Mike, we are getting yeah. close to the end. Why don't you go tell everybody about the website, brother? Uh, TwoDumbYinzers.com. Head over there. We have links to every platform that we are on. We have our email link and our merchandise store. There you have it, everybody. We oh, do want to thank you, Laura Snow, so much. Oh, my God. Yes. And you know what? As soon as I talked to you the other day and, and, and we got confirmation you was coming in, I, I I was just so overwhelmed. I was so happy, excited. Yes. Um, you know, to be able to talk to you face-to-face, -face, so to speak, has been really awesome and, and a great experience. And, you know, we always, always, like I said, we are big fans of yours and we'll continue. We'll continue to support you in anything that you do. Mr. Aurora Snow, please don't ever hesitate to get a hold of us if you need anything. If you um, ever want to come back on the show, you're always welcome. Mike, do you have anything for Aurora before we take off? I, I I do not. We covered everything that I had. Just thank Aurora. you again for coming on. We great. I we, we <laughs> really do appreciate it. You were thank awesome. You. Everybody, check her out. She is a she's a journalist. She writes for the Daily Beast. Keep your eye on that. She's all over the social media. Go on Instagram, Twitter. You're gonna find her. Aurora Snow. Everybody, thank you so much, Aurora. Thank you. For, for Ryan, Mike, Aurora Snow. Two dumb angels. See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have Thanks. a good day. Thank you. Bye. You too.